Right, so there we have it. <laughs> Land Shan 2 from a 3x3 tarp. Cool, isn't it? Suppose you want to see inside, don't you? Good morning, and thanks for joining me again. What a lovely morning it is as well. See Sheffield just behind me there, and we're just on the edge of the Peak District National Park. Over beyond those trees, we've got Stanage Edge. This is a lovely little spot, although not everybody treats it with respect. So I've come out for a bit of lunch and to mess about with some gear, as you do. This is better than the back garden or the local park. Might as well make myself comfortable. Let's get in front of that telly, shall we? Oh yes. So if you saw me last video, I was camping in a tiny little tent. Art Standy was set up under a marquee. He had acres of space. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed camping in the little tents, but sometimes it's nice to have that little bit of extra room and it's got me thinking. So I brought a tarp out with me today thought I'd practice a couple of little setups and then get some lunch. I'm not in a rush to get out of this chair to be honest, so I'm going to have five more minutes and then I'll crack on. First things first, <laughs> I'm going to attach my chair to something weighty. One gust of wind and this is off the hill. It's always handy to have something, a little bag or something that's got me ground sheet in just to kneel down on. Stops you getting your trousers wet. So I camped recently using my Outkit Rig Solo Person Tarp. And it's great just for giving you that little bit of coverage for a bivvy bag, for example. But you want something a little bit bigger, especially when it gets colder or the, the weather's gonna come in. So I'm gonna set up with a three by three tarp, which is one of the most popular sizes that you can get really. Pull some guy ropes, a few pegs, summer for lunch. So the tarp that I've been playing around with lately is the Bushman 3x3 tarp. It is really lightweight and as you can see it packs down really small. I have got an Alpkit 3x3 and a DD 3x3 tarp but they're really bulky whereas this is ultra light material. This one comes with a bag of tie out points. Not these carabiners though, I'll show you what they're for in a minute. So as you've seen from the title of the video this setup is going to be very similar to the infamous Lanshan 2 tent. But I like that shelter because you can also adapt it a little bit just by moving the, one of the poles and adding a guy line. You've got a lot more open space inside. I'll show you. Get a couple of pegs in. We don't want it blowing away, do we? I'm just going to open the tarp out because there's a few things I need to show you if you want to have a go at building this shelter. Right, so this tarp has got 22 attachments, I think it is, all the way around the outside. So you need a tarp that has got one, two, three, four, five attachments along the edge. But you also need five attachments across the middle. So some of them, some tarps don't have these ones in the center. So make sure you get one that does. So they're Bushmen 3x3 Ultralight does, as well as the DD tarp. You'll see why you need those in a minute. So the first bit you need to peg out is one in from the corner. However, it does work better if you've got a little bit of line on there. I'm just gonna put Clovich on there, but you can have loops already on or Proper tie out points, choice is yours. That just gives you a little bit more room and ventilation. You need to do the same 
on this one. So again, it's one in from the end. Right, for the next bit, you're gonna need a couple of little carabiners. Bought these from Amazon, I think they were six pound. I'll drop a link in the description below, as well as all the other gear that you see today. Right, so what we wanna do here, we need to unpeg these two at the end. Go to the middle, move one out from the middle on either side and bring those two together and then just clip them together with a carabiner like that. So then you've got this sort of effect. Repeat that on the other side as well. There we go. And then all you have to do is go to the opposite end of the tent. Again, it is one in from either end. I've got little guy lines on here. Just pull it so it's 90 degrees and add a little bit of tension. Not very much. You still want to be able to be able to lift your tarp up a bit. And the last one here. So pull it taut so it's square and then just back it off just a little tiny bit so you don't want to be ripping the guy lines out. So you should have a rectangular shape now. Now you're going to need a couple of guy lines and your trekking poles. After all the land shine is a trekking pole tent isn't it? Not this one. One in. So this one, this is what you want. I'm going to put my trekking pole through there and attach my tie out point. Then I'm just going to raise this up. Easier said than done, isn't it? Again, not perfectly tight yet as you're just setting up. And then you want to guy this out. I'm gonna do the same on this side. One in from this side, through the loop. Get my guy line on. So the guy lines that come with these, let me show you. I've got little hooks on them. So they're really easy, you've got two hands anyway, there we go, to put on and off. And this one's also an adjustable one as well, so you can tighten it up. So we've got a basic shape there, look. Now if you want to tighten things up, just pull on that. Adds a bit of tension across that ridge line. Before we move on, I'd quickly like to thank Squarespace who sponsored the video today. So if you don't know who Squarespace are, they're the number one place to go if you want to have a go at building a website by yourself never been easier to have a website of your own. All you need to do is choose one of their ready-made templates, upload some photos and add some text and within a couple of hours you've got a website. We've been using Squarespace for a few years to sell things like t-shirts and bobble hats as well as promoting the YouTube channel and our prize competitions. The platform's got loads of different features you can keep an eye on your analytics to see where all your traffic's coming from. You can set up online video courses or subscription services. Or if you've got something to sell or you just want to showcase your photos, then Squarespace has got something for you. So if you want to have a go at building a website of your own, then click the link in the description below or head over to squarespace.com forward slash Paul Messner. You'll get a totally free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Right, so what I do next is I unclip that, bring it this side of the pole, clip it back in again. And I'm just going to peg this out. There we go. Right, as you can see, a couple of little flappy bits here. So what I find works best for me is I loosen off my pole a little bit. I bring it out to the angle so it is more or less where the door is. There we go, so we've got a slightly angled pole. 
and depending which way the wind is blowing, I can bring this round and I've got some more little guy lines here. I've got a carabiner on them. So the wind's blowing that way, you can find it its own way. Look, I'm going to clip that onto there. I can pull this out of the way. Another little loop. So I've done this just behind the tent. I'll show you why in a minute. When we get inside. So that sealed your door up. The same over here, so bring the pole out, more or less right up to your peg. Wrap the fly around it to give you the seal. Clip on your little carabiner to this tie out point here. And just tuck those in out of the way. Nice and taut. See, because I've angled the poles, that's backed off a little bit. So I'm going to tighten that up. So sometimes these can loosen off a little bit. I like to finish off with a couple of little half hitches. So I'll put that one in there once I've got it as I want it. Shove that up there and I'll put another one in just to lock it in place. That just stops things sliding off and you can easily undo these. If you want to go belts and braces, you can tighten these ones down as well. Probably better off putting a little bit of cordage on there though. Right, so there we have it. <laughs> Lanshan 2 from a 3x3 tarp. Cool, isn't it? Suppose you want to see inside, don't you? Right, so here's how you get in the tent. First up, you need to unclip that. This, I'm going to shove it under the tent. Next job, I'm just going to pull that off the peg. Easy to stick it back on again. I'm just going to unclip one of them. So now you've got a huge doorway. I'm going to get this ground sheet inside so I don't get totally wet through. Look at the space in here. <laughs> Like a palace. Plenty of headroom, look. Oh, there is for me. Let me show you how to close the door. By the way, you're better off getting in from the opposite side to the wind. It does make it much easier, but I'm on the edge of a hill there. So what we need to do is clip those two loops together again. Do it the other side of your pole. Put that back on to the peg and then with this loop I'm just going to clip it onto the carabiner. There we go. It's not quite as taut on the inside so you can lay either way you want. You can lay that way or this way but I find there's more room if you go this way. There is for me anyway at 5'8". So the only ventilation you've got is at the bottom so you may get a little bit of condensation in here but it is ventilated you can see how much tidier it is from the outside one <laughs> compared to this one inside but you suppose you could do it from the outside but you just have to mess around a little bit I'm gonna see if I can do it just for just for giggles I suppose I've done it, but I had to undo the peg and then stick it back in down there. Just reaching in the corner. Choice is yours. Right, I'm going out. 
and we'll show you how you can alter this to give yourself an open space and even more room. Right, so we need to undo this, take your pole off. Just move it to the end. So you can move those pegs out of there. I'm just going to leave it in and then if I ever wanted to drop it back into a fully enclosed shelter, I can do that. One extra couple of pegs in those corners. You've got an absolute palace in there now for a three by three shelter. You could sleep three, possibly four people in there. It would be pretty snug. Let's see if I can get my chair in. Happy days. Korean barbecue rice. Right, something a little bit different. Cooking with one of these alcohol gel solid fuels. This is from Fire Dragon. This is what the British military use, I think. I'm just putting it in this little uh, alcohol stove tin. Do need to be careful with these. Because if you get it all over your fingers and light it, <laughs> you can set your hands on fire. However, you can also use these as hand sanitizer, so it's multi-use and just don't light your hands for a little while afterwards. Just because I'm a geek, I'll see how long it takes, roughly. In hindsight, I'd have set the tent 90 degrees round, so I was facing that view with the door open. So while I'm waiting for that to heat up, I thought we could have a little natter about testing your gear. You don't need to go out camping every time. You're better off finding out if something works in nice conditions, somewhere close to the car. Um, and then when you're happy with it, then take it further afield and go camping with it. It's great on days like this just to come out for a bit, test your kit and have a bit of fun. There's no pressure to find a spot or anything like that. Just go somewhere quiet. You don't even have to go too far from home. Bit of fresh air, bit of peace. What's not to like? It's only five and a half minutes and that's boiling. Yeah, these are working really well. I'll just let that simmer away till it burns out. So that burned out after 11 minutes. It's quite clean burning as well. I'm gonna eat this outside though. Cheap meal, no washing up. I think this is from Aldi. Happy days. Now that's lunch out of the way. See how easy it is to pack this away. Let's get these carabiners out of the way first. You don't want to leave anything attached to the tent other than a couple of little guy lines, which I'll leave these on permanently. Drop the poles. Keep everything tied down because we don't want it blowing away.
So I've changed my stance a little bit when it comes to tarps. I used to stuff them. Now I fold and roll. much easier to get all of the air out although not all the grass right let's squeeze this one Oop. almost all back in right that's playtime over for me Hope you found this little video useful. Let me know in the comments if you take a tarp with your camping. As you've seen today, they're a really handy bit of kit. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.